In honor of the increasing fan base for Ratchet and Clank that has climbed so high to spawn a feature film, I figured, what better way to show my support than by doing full overviews on all the Ratchet and Clank games this month. Insomniac Games has treasured their Lombax and Robot since it has become one of the largest Sony game franchises, resulting in game after game, a decent line of merchandise, and ultimately a full-length movie written by the same writer as the PS3 games. If the movie turns out to be a big hit, then let this be a fond reminder of what we loved about the games to begin with. But if the movie turns out to be a total flop, then this will allow us to remember what made the Ratchet and Clank games so special and why we love them so much. So sit back, relax, maybe eat lunch while watching this, and enjoy this nostalgic trip down memory lane. The very first Ratchet and Clank game was released November 4th, 2002 on the PS2. With its amazing 3D platforming and awesome graphics for the time, it was able to rival the likes of Jack and Daxter and Sly Cooper. There is so much to be said here, so I'll just start at the beginning. In the Solana Galaxy on planet Veldon, a young Lombax creature named Ratchet, voiced by Mikey Kelly, is building a spaceship to explore beyond what he knows. His life changes forever as a ship crashes nearby, and as he investigates, he finds a small robot in the wreckage. The robot, voiced by David Kay, informs Ratchet that the galaxy is in extreme danger. As he shows them a video of Supreme Executive Chairman Drek, voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, as he explains to the people of planet Novalis that the homeworld of his race, the Blarg, has become so polluted that they can no longer live there any longer. His solution to the problem is to literally build a new planet by extracting massive chunks from other resource-rich plants and reattaching them to the new world while destroying them in the process. The robot believes that their only hope is to enlist the help of a galactic superhero named Captain Quark, voiced by Jim Ward. Ratchet soon agrees, and the two head off to planet Novalis to start their adventure. Ratchet names the robot Clank, and the two form a very strong friendship. Along the way, they come across a bunch of strange characters, a lot of really well-designed worlds, and a bunch of awesome weapons. The story is really well told, the jokes are mostly solid and are at least worth a giggle, but I'd say the biggest thing that works well is the voice acting and character relationships. Ratchet and Clank will occasionally joke and tease each other, and they even go through a fighting phase until one has to admit they were wrong. It definitely feels like a buddy-buddy road trip kind of journey from the early 2000s, and it really shows as a product of its time, and I do say that with the utmost respect. Getting to gameplay, the platforming is really solid, but not as good as its following sequels. The worlds that you visit are really amazing. Each of them has a unique environment and different designs to distinguish them. You'll go from a large city with tall buildings, to a desert outpost during the night, to an enormous space station overrun with mutant experiments. The weapons that you purchase from vendors all have special functions, and some are really unique, such as a glove that releases a pot of destructive little robots, a suck cannon that sucks up small enemies and fires them out as projectiles, a ray gun that turns enemies into chickens, and my favorite, the Visibomb gun, which fires a rocket that you can control and steer to a target. Bolts are the currency of this universe, and they are collected from defeating enemies and breaking crates, and you will definitely need a lot of them. The designs of the characters really stand out, and they're very well animated. I especially like the design for Captain Quark, who looks like a typical superhero in spandex and parades his ego all around. Is it just me, or does he look an awful lot like the Tick in green tights and even less intelligence? In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if that's where the inspiration came from. The rest of the designs look really good for the time, however, I think a few of them look a little bit dated. This guy looks good enough to be on the PS1. The upbeat, memorable soundtrack is honestly some of the best I've ever heard, but I also noticed that a lot of the cutscenes don't have music. Some people might see this as a turnoff, but I really didn't let it distract me too much. So with its stunning creativity, imagination, and satisfying gameplay, this became the first in a long legacy of Ratchet & Clank games. If you still haven't played it, I'd sadly say that it's best at home on its console of origin, since the PS3 version suffers from numerous glitches, and I'd strongly advise staying away from the PS Vita version. The game has a ton of secrets and replay value, so it easily gets players to return to it years later, even though I said some of it is a little bit dated by today's standards, but regardless, it still holds a special place in my heart, and I'm sure it does for many other players as well. And if you don't like it, you can take your whiny, sniveling, snot-nosed populations, form a line behind me, and kiss my- We're still on? Well, turn it off, you idiot! <laughs>